Hi, this is Lucas Spees here. As you can see, I've taken over our spare bedroom here. And this is where I'm going to start to do my journey here with contributing a little bit more to, well, hopefully the world in general. Some of the things that I like to talk about really and to show are about business, sales, things related to amputees, because I'm an amputee, door-to-door -door sales in particular. That's what I do for a job, and I am a roofer, so that's awesome. So a lot of the videos that I've posted previously are about roofing, roofing things, hail, how hail damages roofs. And I'm interested in knowing what you guys think, because you know, I post these inspection videos and then I post them on an unlisted channel so that when I meet with my clients, I just email them to them. The thing is that the clients love when I show the videos. It's amazing. And so rather than do what I had been doing before, which was to use a, a GoPro on a head cam and go do an inspection and then take the chip out of the GoPro and put it into a laptop and then show the video on a laptop, which does sell jobs, it does work well, it's an absolutely fantastic approach. Now I decided to do it with my iPad. I go there with the iPad and I you know, shoot the video. I still use the same kinds of tools, except the benefit is that as soon as I get off the roof, I show the video most times nowadays the homeowners are saying, hey, can I get a copy of that? Can you share it with me? So I'll share it, you know, with AirDrop on the phone, or I will email it to them on the spot where I, you know, upload it to YouTube, and then it says tell a friend, and then I tell it to them. The thing is that I'm starting to feel maybe I should just put it in a public channel and let people comment on it. I mean, what do you guys think? So that's kind of one of the things that I wanted to talk about today. The other thing is that, well, today was awesome. I'm very grateful for today. Today's Sunday, and it's the 25th of February. You know, I always feel good prospecting in February because a lot of times I'll see people's Christmas decorations out there. And I'll think to myself, wow, I got a good jump on the year. You know, people haven't even put away their Christmas yet. And I'm already out prospecting new business. That's fantastic. And so I saw some of that today. I knocked with my associate Jabbar probably 40 doors, something like that. I have it written down. And it was effective, finally. I, this is the third day in a row that I've been out prospecting new business. And unfortunately, I didn't get any inspections the last two days. I hadn't been knocking enough hours. That was a problem. My total time until today was three and a half hours or something like that. So I, I haven't been putting enough time into that part of it. But I didn't get any inspections. And the other thing was I was not really knocking at the right times because by the time I got caught up with other things, it would be like 4, 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon or something, that's prime time to be knocking. I shouldn't be doing anything else besides knocking doors. So it was nice today to go out and prospect this neighborhood where we've already been doing work and we got someone else signed up today, so that's awesome. And he is an interested client and he was thrilled because here's an interesting situation. The storm date that we're using is from back in July, July 2017. And right now it's February 2018, so it's seven months after the fact, right? Now, he was with a previous insurance company, and they denied him, and he wasn't thrilled, and the word on the street about this particular insurance company is that they've been getting denied, they've been denying a lot of the clients for a long period of time, no one's getting approvals who have that insurance company and a lot of the other insurance companies are getting approvals. So they're like, well, geez, why am I paying all this premium into this insurance company? They're not taking care of me. 
So they switched to a different insurance company and, you know, he wanted to proceed with the claim. And I said, okay, well, let me go and take a look and try and find an active storm date. See if there was another storm date that maybe I'm not totally aware about in this neighborhood. Sometimes there's these pockets of storms that happen and I'll let you know. So I went to my truck. I flipped through my book. I have a binder that's got all the storm dates in it. And I flipped through it and I couldn't find anything else that was active since... July in that neighborhood. They were even remotely close. So I went back to him and I said, hey, I don't have a good date besides the July date. So, you know, I think the best course of action, and after I thought about it, I should have started this from the beginning. Let's go for a reinspection on your previous claim. Because you already filed a claim, you got denied. So the claim's already open. We'll call them up and we'll get a second opinion, get a different adjuster out there. I'll go meet with that adjuster and see if I can get that approval for you. And then at that point, we'll move forward with your project. And, you know, in case they deny it again or whatever reason, you know, at least we tried. We'll keep it online for a future date. And as soon as another storm happens, we'll come out here and we'll work with the new insurance company. How's that? He was thrilled. He likes that because... Now he knows that his premium is not going to go up with his old insurance company because he's not even insured with them anymore. So it's a win-win for him. He gets another shot at it, and his insurance company could still come back and approve it. I've had lots of times where a company had insured a homeowner, and then the homeowner switched insurance companies, and we were prospecting that neighborhood at that time, and she said, yeah, I want to move forward. I want to file a claim because there's damage. I showed them in the video. They're like, oh, my gosh, that's, let's just take care of it. And I said, okay, well, who's your insurance company? They said, well, we just switched. And I said, okay, well, when did you switch? And the, the date was, was after that last storm. I said, well, then the way to do it is we have to ask you, who were you insured at this date? And they said, okay, well, I was in store, insured with you know, State Farm or whoever it is. Okay, great. Well, let's call up State Farm. Let's get them out here and we'll file a claim with that instead of your new insurance company. And a lot of times that's work. And then, you know, we meet with State Farm or whoever your insurance company is and they say, yep, there's damage. So then they'll approve it. So the idea is that you have to use the active date. Don't use a date that's not effective or don't just make up a date just to file it with a new insurance company because they got denied before that doesn't make a lot of sense file it for an active date review that date make sure that date is good and then file a claim on whatever company was insured during that time and i've had tremendous success with that So that was good. Also, what worked out well today, even though it was with two people, me and you know Jabbar and myself, and a lot of times that's more effective to have two people prospecting than it is to have one person prospecting. Sometimes no, you know it's still really early in the season. It's you know it's cold out here in Chicago. It's windy. Winds were at thirty miles an hour. Yeah, it was warmer than, than it had been, but not by all that much, 35 degrees, something like that. And when you factor in the wind chill, it's still like 20-something. It's still cold. So people aren't really seeing the let's work on our house type thing yet. We did get a bunch of people face-to-face because -face, it's Sunday. A lot of people are home. We talked to six people or five people. We got one inspection. We got the person signed. So fortunately, that worked out. And there's another inspection that I did that I prospected by telephone. I saw the phone number on the sign. I've been eyeing this building for a long time. I know it has some problems with the roof. And I contacted her because they had the phone number. So I called the phone number, of course, and introduced myself. And so I did an inspection on that. And that one might take out a little bit longer. But, you know, as far as the door-to-door -to -door today, it was, it was awesome. I liked it. I, I really want to improve the conversion rate from face to face to do an inspection because I talked to a lot of people today but my conversion to get that inspection was too low. I feel it needs to be 50% 
that if someone's there that I can most times get up on that roof. And, you know, there's other trainers that are out there that are saying, you know, do a walk away or do this or do that. Well, you know what? That's fine and dandy. And I've gotten success doing that too, assuming the walk away and getting right back up on the roof. That's a good way to do it. I've also got thrown off roofs doing that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, yeah, it should be more assumptive. I figured out another way that I haven't really started using yet, but I'm going to start using it now. And that is first to find out how long they've owned the home so I know if they're the homeowner. Then I'm going to tell them, well, you know, look, uh, while you're checking this out online, while I'm up there doing, doing your inspection for you, you know, here's a, a gift card from Starbucks for $15 to go and get yourself a latte for when we're done. Something like that to kind of incentivize that so I get up there a little bit more frequently. You know, I want to be congruent. I think that my congruency is more important than push, 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 get up on the roof and da 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 I want to be the same person that they see me when I'm at the door for the first time and the same person that they see me when I write up the deal and the same person that they see me when I'm with the adjuster and the same person they see me when I'm there at the build and when I'm collecting the payments and when I'm on the phone, the congruency is more important. Rushing to get in the inspection, rushing to get up there, that's great, you know, because you get the inspection, so that's the benefit of it. You have more chances to close. But how do you really come off? One of those pushy guys that you're up there, you're doing this, you're doing that, you know, uh, just don't worry about it. You don't know what's up there. You're doing scare tactics and things like that. Come on now. And... That was good. So we did that. And then, you know, I am excited right now. You know, I went to work out after that, so I felt great. I'm excited. I'm kind of making a lot of changes right now that I'm implementing kind of all at the same time. Uh, again, doing a lot more prospecting door to door. It's the beginning of the season, so I'm planning on doing it the whole year, really. The last few years, I've hired a lot of people to do this for us and what I found is that the turnover is just too high I spend so much time training 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 and I don't get the results for it that I put forth and I honestly in my heart of hearts feel that I can do more total volume by myself or maybe with me and one or two other people than with the large teams that we've had before I mean, we've had teams of you know 15 people out prospecting and the whole company did three million dollars in sales and I really don't think that three million dollars in sales is really at all unattainable by someone who's committed to going out there and making it happen and the other part about it that's a benefit is that I don't have to pay commission on that because it's me running the business so it's much better because the company makes more money for it and you know I get to work closer with the homeowners. I'm going to be able to get a lot more referrals. My ratio from signing people up to getting referrals is significantly higher than it is with other people because I have a way to structure it so that the, the homeowners want to give referrals. They feel that if they didn't give me the referrals to help their friends and neighbors, that they their friends and neighbors may get hosed by some contractor because they may not know that Capiche is out here and that we're putting forth a quality product, quality installation, and all that. So it seems like all the pieces are in order and more beneficial in order to do it this way. And right now I'm good with it. And not only that, honestly, I've been interviewing tons and tons of people. And we make it hard now. It used to be that we'd say, hey, so you're interested in the job? Okay, you're hired. You know, here's your clipboard. Here's your business cards. Go get them, Tiger, kind of thing. And when you are so open about who you bring into your company, you get a lot of riffraff, you know, that couldn't get any other job. So psh, I guess I'll just do a door-to-door -door sales job. 
you know, it's hard work. It is. People don't like to be rejected. Imagine asking all these girls out on dates in high school and getting denied, 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 denied. Finally, you're just like, well, maybe I just won't ask girls out on dates or anything like that. I mean, it doesn't really happen because who, how, how many times are you going to keep on doing it and doing it and doing it? And people say, no, 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 no. And they're getting rejected, climbing, you know, do your free inspection, do your free inspection, whatever. <laughs> they tell you, no, 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 no. And then you get someone that says yes. And you're like, oh, yes, thank God. <laughs> but you can't show that because you're expecting to get that. So it's a lot of rejection. You just got to deal with it. And that's good. And so, right, I'm making these changes then. I'm implementing a more aggressive workout routine. I've been running a lot more, and that's been helping my energy level because now that I'm running a lot more, you know, walking a few miles is not so cumbersome on me physically with my amputation and things like that. Sometimes it can be challenging to walk for a long period of time, especially if I get like these cysts and these, they're almost like small infections in my skin and it just really, really hurts. Like, like pimples that get big in my skin because of the leg, because it keeps rubbing, 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 and it hurts. Well, you know, the running seems to have been helping that because my body's more used to it. It's, it's used to the strenuous activity. I'm physically, my, my vibrancy is much higher. I'm drinking a lot more water. I'm eating a healthier diet, so it's helping my skin. It's helping me, you know, be more active. I mean, it's 10 o'clock at night, which normally I'd be fast to sleep, but you know, by nine o'clock or so, and I'm doing a video, so I'm excited. And I think I'm going to do that. I'm, my idea is to quit the coffee for a while. I've been drinking a lot of coffee and, you know, I'm switching to uh, Jerba Mate and it's a healthier alternative. It's more natural. It's not as processed. And that's really what I'm trying to do across the board. I want to have a lot less the processed foods, I want to really control my diet and the exercise and drinking more water and then prospecting and doing a lot of that. And now, of course, with the social media and some of this stuff with the video and, you know, answering more comments and things like that. I've already been on Facebook, not Facebook, was on Instagram for a while tonight. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on myself in many different areas and I'm going to see how it goes. And I think that this is a good avenue right now because there might be some people that are out there that are interested in a lot of these things that I'm talking about self-improvement motivation you know again with that analogy you get the no 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 how do I keep moving how do I get the incentive to keep going and that's kind of what I'm going after right now is that it's it's an interesting time in my life I had a a good run, a very good run for a long period of time, a few years. Last year was a little bit challenging. I had some things that came up that were unexpected and, you know, we got big fast, you know, doing millions of dollars. Our first year we did over a million dollars in sales and then we grew from there. And then, so we're building, 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 but the turnover was so high. We're getting all these different people and the company has to change again. And the company has to change again. We hired so many people. And honestly, that's part of the reason why I'm only hiring the best now. I make my interviewing process challenging. It's not easy to work for us anymore. You have to put up through a long interviewing process. And if you have the tenacity to, do, to go through that whole interview process, Maybe we give you an opportunity, maybe we don't. And what we found is that we've made less hiring mistakes. Occasionally we still do make them. The problem is that hiring mistakes are extremely expensive. And I think that most people in this industry don't realize how expensive that is. And I think that's part of the reason why so many roofers, they go really big, really fast, and then they are closed the next year because they don't realize that the mistakes that they hired from the previous year are extremely expensive. Hiring someone the wrong way, it's not just the money that you pay them. You lose all your opportunity costs that you invested into them, training them, getting them up to speed, knocking doors with them, prospecting with them. You lose all the opportunity that you could have spent training someone who was worthwhile and building them up and getting them going. So you, you miss that whole opportunity cost. 
in addition, all the work that they fouled up. So they were out there prospecting, developing work, and they messed things up. And so now you lose all that. The expenses are much higher on that. So a lot of times it's three times, four times, five times what you're already paying them in terms of commission or salary. That's extremely expensive. Who wants to pay that? So we, we made it challenging. And, and since we've made it harder to become part of our team, yeah, it's more work for me. Yeah, I have to do the sales. I have to do the prospecting, which honestly, I like doing that part anyways. I love talking with people. I love keeping my crews busy because I'm out there prospecting, talking to homeowners. I love it. There's nothing I would rather do than just knock doors all day and prospect and help to you know, solve the problems from hailstorms. I think it's amazing. I'm very, very grateful for that. So it's better. It's better to do it this way. It's lean and mean, and um, I'm good with that. I am good with that. So all these changes right now, I think, are going to help me to produce that level of outcome that I want. And my idea is to share it with you guys and gals and let you know what I'm what I'm doing with this. I know I can't be the only door-to-door -door salesperson with one leg. I know I can't be. There's got to be someone else out there. I really hope I run into someone. And I know that I'm not, I don't know that I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one leg roofer out here either because I heard stories when I was talking with adjusters about another guy out here who does it. So, you know, being disabled and climbing these roofs and knocking doors door to door, it's an interesting thing. I, it's certainly changed my life. I mean, before this, I was in a rough situation. I was completely broke, uh, no money, just had a business that closed down and lost everything with it. I'd been unemployed for about 10 months after that, looking for work. And, you know, I, I just answered an ad in the paper for prospecting door to door. And I'll tell you what, since I've been doing it, it's absolutely changed my life. I you know, I just the other day I was looking through some old papers and I found on uh, one of my papers some lists, some goals that I had written down and I've already accomplished the two biggest ones, which were to buy a house that was 5,000 square feet. The one I have is much bigger than that. And then the other one was to buy a brand new uh, Cadillac Escalade and I accomplished that. I'm not saying that to impress you. I'm saying that to because it, it impresses me because not too long ago I was living in a very small house, struggling to get any money through my, to get any money at all. I mean, I didn't have enough gas money to drive to the skate park to ride my bike. And the one time that I did was after Christmas, it was 2000, 2013, no, 2012, end of 2012, I was coming back from Ray's Mountain Bike Park in Milwaukee, and uh, and the only reason why I was able to go up there was because I had gotten a little bit of money from Christmas, and I was like, oh, great, and you know, the person who gave it to me said, this is for you, go have a little bit of fun, and and enjoy yourself, so I went up to Ray's Mountain Bike, it was December 28th, came back, and I totaled my car, completely smashed it to pieces, and it, it was it was tough. So 2013 is when I started originally going door to door. And I'll tell you what, within a very short period of time, it, it was life changing. I was at the time currently, uh, our family was on WIC, women, infant and children, you know, which I would go grocery shopping and I'd go get all the different stuff and I'd take it to the, which was not very much. And then I'd go to the cash register to check out and the lady would say okay it's not these beans you got to get the other beans oh well, it's not this package of rice you have to get the other package of rice it wasn't very clearly marked you know and so everything had to be a specific kind so picking up six or seven items would take me an hour and you might think well didn't you recognize her? well yeah but each of the wick tickets was different for that week or whatever it was just a pain it was an extreme challenge I'll never forget after I made some sales and made some commission, the job I was working for was commission only. And I got some money and you know what I did? 
I didn't buy the regular block cheese. I bought some nice cheese. <laughs> it was the best tasting cheese I ever had. It was awesome. And yeah, so a, like I said, this type of work is life changing. It it's made my life much more fulfilling. I am so happy that I get to help people every single day. I'm very grateful. I live in a state of gratitude. I'm rarely extremely emotional, you know, bent out of shape or anything like that. You know, even being in construction, which is a lot of times a high high pressure type industry, it seems to be a natural fit for me. My kids like to be around me. You know, I don't feel like hiding from my family or anything like that. I love being involved. Or, you know, it is long hours, but on the weekends and things like that. And we just took a nice long trip, 10 days in South America. It was amazing. And the only reason why I can do that kind of stuff right now is because I'm, I'm more connected than I ever have been. I'm, I feel I'm more centered than I ever have been. I feel like this is my true calling. I feel like even though that it's winter and there's some challenges that come up with being in construction in winter in Chicago, you know, things things will work out and it's going to be an outstanding year. I'm very excited about that. I'm interested in sharing my results and letting you guys know what I think and how I, how it, you know, what comes up, whatever challenges and things like that. I'm going to be honest and, and yeah, I'm looking forward to being more engaged online. I'm looking forward to, you know, I've read these books recently, the Gary V one, Crushing It, and, you know, some of these other ones, and they're all about the social media thing. So that's kind of what inspired me to go online and create this video and make my little at home segment. I mean, I have my little studio at my office, which I do training material on, but I, I want to kind of open up another side of that where it's more you know, getting to know me as a person a little bit more on an intimate level. And hopefully some people that are on the fence about it might be might be worried about, you know, for example, starting a door to door sales opportunity or, you know, you know, an amputee that might be considering even going back to work in the workforce or something like that, or, you know, returning veteran that served the company, their country. And you're like, well, you know, like, should I go into uh, the workforce or should I stay on disability or something like that, that maybe I can help to inspire someone to make the decisions that will positively impact their life. And I would love to hear about that. I think that's amazing. One of the people that I follow on Instagram, Paula Antonini, she has an absolutely inspiring story. She was a model already, an aspiring model, very successful. And she was hit by a drunk driver and lost her leg. And now since that has happened to her, her career has apparently taken off in very high levels and she's helping all different kinds of kids in Brazil and Brazil is an area that yeah it gets a lot of attention it's a huge country it's gigantic it's one of the BRICS countries you know Brazil Russia India China and South Africa and it's the amount of people there that have disabilities is it's staggering it's like US it's like in these other countries with just so many people that have problems and she's out there making a difference in the world so I'm inspired by her and 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 these people so because of that that's why I'm deciding to make this video so here's the first one I'm gonna be you know doing another one probably in a couple more days maybe it'll be a little different maybe it'll be similar maybe I'll get one view maybe I'll get a few views I don't know I hope that you like it and and if you do subscribe to my channel share it with your friends do all that cool stuff and We'll talk to you soon. Bye now.